Hello friends, I am glad to see you again. Today we will orchestrate fourth orchestral texture between woodwinds, harp, percussion and string section. Ok, let's listen to original piano version of the melody. As you see, there are three line progression in this eight bars fraction. Melody, harmony and bass lines. Today I want to add more passionate character to our orchestration. Therefore I am thinking to give the melody to first violins. So uh, we decided about the melody, now is the time for other lines. Let's start from the bass line. I have two instruments for this. They will support the harmony. Ok, I give the bass line to cellos. I am adding pizzicato technique, but you can produce it with short notes. It is my choice, there is a harp in my texture which has plucked sounding and it blends very well when the contrabasses or cellos play with pizzicato technique. The dynamic marking is piano. For reinforcing the bass line, I use contrabasses, which will play an octave lower than cellos. I'm adding pizzicato technique. The dynamic marking is piano. Now let's move to orchestrate the harmony line. Today I will show you a very easy and simple orchestration technique. I will use more figures for orchestration the harmony line. So let's start from the first figure. Look at it carefully. I have three unpitched eighths figure and three notes. A, D, F. We have to get more figures from the figure we have. In order to clear the thinking, you have to forget how is given the harmony in the piano score. Just look at the notes as an individual and without any length. In our case, there are only three notes A, D, F. Then let's set these notes onto our figure. Now we get our first transformed figure. I give this figure to harp. I'm adding slur because I need legato sounding. The dynamic marking is piano.
Let's move to next figure. I want to use only middle node of this transformed figure because I'm looking for how to reach the combination of half and the baseline. Okay, I take only the D node from my figure. But you can use D and F as together in your own score. In my case, I don't hinder to harp sound, hence I use it delicately. This figure should be sound as plucked, therefore I give it to second violence pizzicato. The dynamic marking is piano. Let's move to next figure. For these ones, I want to take the dotted quadrant node figure. Why I choose this figure? Look at the score. The harmony and the bass line are played with plucked techniques. Sounding is very short and dry. I have to smooth this sounding with sustained notes. As we see, there is a place between bass and the harmony lines which we could feel it. I have advice to my students. When you need to fill the score with sustained calls, do it correctly. All your hard work is to get clear sounding of the main melody. You can share sustained code between melody, above the melody, or below the melody, regardless of how to give in, in the piano score. Because Composer couldn't present all of his orchestral ideas in the piano score depending on piano playing techniques. For example, composer couldn't take the harmony as wide in five octaves, but orchestra could do it. So, conclusion. Choose the right place in registers and the right instruments for harmony. Don't conflict it with the melody. Melody always should shine between the orchestra. In our case, melody will be taken by first violence in the high range. For these ones, I prefer to shade it above the bass line because I want to keep the place below the melody for anamans. So, I'm filling the place by violas between cellos and the second violence. There is no general rule how to transform the harmony, but I want to talk about my experience in Wilde notation. So our first chord is in D minor. We have high D in second violence and a low D in the cellos. We need F and A notes. I'm writing divisi, which means six players will play A note, other six players F note. Second bar in A minor. A note remain unchanged. F note moves to E. I'm adding slur, which means all two bars will be played on the one bow stroke.
third and the fourth bars are the same of first and second bar. Fifth bar is in B flat major. We have high D in second violins and low B flat in the cellos. We need F and B flat notes. Sixth bar is F major 7. Second violins take high C, cellos take low F. In this bar, I want a little progression. Therefore, I am writing F and A, then move them to E and C. Our seventh bar is in G minor 7. I am writing G and B flat, then B flat remains unchanged, but G note moved to F. Last bar is in A minor. So, I'm adding E and A notes. Okay, violas are completed. It is my taste. You could feel it by other ways. I'm adding the melody line. So, our basic orchestration is completed. Now I want to talk about how is the principle of orchestration and how I do it in my own scores. The orchestration looks like to drink a tea. If you want to drink, firstly you should have a cup, but it will be better to drink it with expensive cup, which has more ornaments. For bass orchestration, firstly you should orchestrate the basic, which could be played. Then you can add your own ornaments to your score. So these ornaments will show how is your mastering ability. We have finished our basic orchestration. Now is the time adding ornaments. For this, I will use only two figures. Let's start from first. Our first figure is 3 eighths figure, which we used it for half and for second violins. Now I want to use it for woodwind section. Of course, we can give this figure to each instrument, but I don't prefer to use doubling if I have chance to transform it. Let's follow me. I will use chain method, which I told in our earlier lectures. This method is very useful to maximize the material. I'm dividing this figure to three rings. Our first ring is A and D. For getting new ring, I'm using chain method. So our next ring is D and F. Let's to create one more. F and A. Good. Now we get new three figures from one figure. Let's share our figures between instruments in the partitioning step. I want to give these figures to bassoon, English horn and two oboes. There's a question why I share it between these instruments. Answer is simple. Would you section divide in two groups depending its sound character? First group are consist of contrabassoon bassoon, English horn, and oboe. These instruments are similar to each other in sounding. Second group are consists of bass clarinet, B-flat clarinet, flute, and piccolo. And these instruments are similar to each other depending its sounding. Now we have two choice. First group and second group. I prefer first group because I have other figure in my mind for second group. 
and they will play more difficult figure than this. Okay, let's analyze first group. The low notes of our course are possible in contrabasso, but middle notes are not. We couldn't give first ring to contrabasso. Our first ring is possible in bassoon, second in English horn, third in oboe. So let's start from bassoon. I'm adding slur, which means player should play it in one breath. The dynamic marking is piano. Only first player will play in this score. Now is the time for second ring. As we said, we give it to English horn. The English horn also will play legato. The dynamic marking is piano. Our third ring is for oboe. Second oboe take F and A notes. I'm adding slur, which means legato. For short end, I'm adding staccato. Our third ring is completed, but I also want to hear first oboe. It is my choice. For first oboe, I'm writing above A and C. If you don't need two oboes, you'd better to write on lower notes for one oboe. The dynamic marking is piano. Now is the time to add one more figure to our score. Okay, let's do it. 
I need a little drive for score. Therefore, I'm choosing 316 triplets. I'm adding the harmony onto this figure in transforming step. I give this figure to in B flat clarinet because it will play smoothly. I'm adding slur. A2 means two clarinets will play in unison. I need it because I want to hear more loud sound than other instruments. The dynamic marking is piano. Our next figure is the same of Clarnes figure, but flute will take it an active higher than Clarnes. I'm adding slur and A2. The dynamic marking is piano. Our last ornament is for Glockenspiel. I'm choosing one quarter note with res for this instrument. It will accentuate the melody. Before starting to notation, I would like to talk about this instrument. Glockenspiel is pitched percussion instrument, which means has a definite pitch and could play the melody. This instrument has a range from G5 to C8. Glockenspiel sounds too active higher than rhythm. There are many types of Glockenspiel in the different orchestra. F5 C8, G5 C8, C5 A8, F5 D8. But for safety you should write for G5 and C8. Now move to notation. I'm writing D4, but it will sound D6. The dynamic marking is piano. I'm using this instrument for to accentuate the melody. So, the orchestration of bass and the harmony lines are completed.
Now we can add the melody onto score. As I said, it will perform by first violins. I have to change the slur for bowing technique. For this technique, I have asked the violin performer how to write correctly. He told me that this score could play with different slur, but I prefer this. So I have a recommendation to my students. You'd better show the score to violin performer and ask how to write slur. Don't hesitate. The dynamic marking is mess of water. So, our fourth orchestral texture is completed. Thanks for watching. See you soon.